Well, this is the front. This is the primary mic right here. This is it. Mic check one two. I'll, I'll turn off channel two when I get back to the camera. Mic check one two. Mic check. Mic check one two three four five. Mic check one two. I, I can't. That noise doesn't help me because it just sounds like. Mic check one two three four five. Mic check one two. How's that, Renee? Mic check one two. Mic check one two. Mic check one two, Renee. Mic check one two three four five. Mic check one two. Is that better? Good. Fabulous. It sure was, dude. They can't hear me back there, so. <laughs> Alright, how's the mic? How's the audio, Renee? Got one slip in here. Beautiful. I switched mics um, because the muff box wasn't sounding as good as I originally thought. So, you want to do another mic check? Okay, okay. One, two, three, four, five. Mic check, mic check. One, two, three, four, five. That was good.
just so you know, we will do a noon, we're going to do a noon hit right here. Live at 5, 6 o'clock whip. Good morning, everyone. Sorry for the slight delay. I'm Jennifer Donnellan, Director of Public Information for the Prince George's County Fire and EMS Department. Uh, thank you for joining us here. We have some news to share also to our community for joining us on, on Facebook Live. I'd like to introduce to you now to Prince George's County State's Attorney, Aisha Braveboy. Ms. Braveboy. Thank you so much, Jennifer, and thank you all so much for being here today. Today I have with me my uh, chief of my special prosecutions unit, Franklin Shelton, if you would come and join me. We also have members of the Prince George's County Fire EMS Department who you will hear from shortly. Uh, we are here to announce the indictment against five former uh, volunteer firefighters from the West Lanham Hills Fire Department. According to our investigation, between December of 2019 through January of 2020, five West Lanham uh, volunteer firefighters uh, conspired with three civilians to set four, uh, to set four fires at vacant homes. It is alleged that these fires were scheduled to be set at times when the conspirators uh, would be on duty to put out those fires. These are allegations. It's important to know that these are allegations. 
and that these individuals are presumed innocent unless and until uh, proven or found guilty in a court of law. I must state that the majority, the vast majority of our firefighters and other uh, public uh, ser service officials here in Prince George's County uh, conduct um, themselves appropriately, that they understand their duty and they perform their duty with honor. And so when individuals who have an oath to protect us, uh, when they violate that oath, uh, we have to take action. And I am fortunate to have a great partnership with our fire department. Uh, we have a wonderful chief, Chief Tiffany Green, who has demonstrated excellent leadership, who has set a very solid standard for both career and volunteer firefighters here in Prince George's County. And so with this investigation uh, and the professionalism shown not only uh, by the, the fire department, but also the work of my special prosecutions unit, uh, we are letting uh, everyone know uh, that we intend to take these matters seriously and that we will seek justice on behalf of our communities. So thank you all so much again for being here with us. My uh, special prosecuting Prosecutions Unit Chief um, Franklin Shelton will talk a little bit more about the individuals who were uh, indicted and the status and their status today. Oops. Okay, we will hear from um, Assistant State's Attorney Franklin Shelton in just a moment. Uh, again, Jennifer Donnellan, Director of Public Information for the Prince George's County Fire and EMS Department. Uh, we are, we have arrived at the end of a very, very lengthy uh, investigation. Fire Chief Tiffany Green, unfortunately, she sends her regrets. Unfortunately, she could not join us today because she's on travel. I do have a statement from her that I'd like to read to you regarding this case and these indictments. The former volunteer firefighters who were indicted in absolutely no way reflect the hardworking and dedicated volunteer and career firefighters who serve our community each and every day. We want our community to know that in January of 2020, more than a year ago, at the very first sign that we potentially had firefighters who could be involved in the deliberate and intentional setting of fires, we immediately had those members in question operationally removed from service. As egregious as these allegations are, we are extremely thankful that no citizens were injured in any of these four fires. We are extremely proud of our investigators and detectives and the work that they performed in this case. Again, it was an extensive case. We launched the investigation, we executed multiple search warrants and interviews, and then turned our findings over to the Prince George's County State's Attorney's Office for prosecution, which is where we are today. She wishes to sincerely thank our fire investigators and the Prince George's County Police Detectives on our arson task force for the great work they were committed and unrelenting in closing this case. So I'll call Shelton back to the, uh, back to the microphone to discuss the status of these four individuals. And then I will introduce to you Battalion Chief Sajahan Jaktiani. He is the commander of our Fire Investigations Division, and he will go into some details about the case. Uh, good morning. You'll hear more from, uh, in terms of the individuals from um, Battalion Chief Jaktiani, but um, as the investigation unfolded, um, there were five individuals, Cole Vasquez, Jeremy Hawkins, Jay St. John, George Smith, and Nicholas Holzberger, who were um, indicted with um, a number of charges at the conclusion of this investigation. Um, all but uh, Jeremy Hawkins were issued summons. They've been informed uh, of the of the indictments and Mr. Hawkins was taken into custody uh, where he remains um, at this point um, and he is uh, a bond was established in his case but so Hawkins was in, is in custody and the remaining uh, defendants 
or issued summons for this uh, for future court dates. Oh, Franklin Shelton. Well, well, summons were issued for um, Cole Vasquez, J. St. John, George Smith, and Nicholas Holzberger. Mr. Hawkins was taken into custody. Okay, so the other four are still outstanding warrants. For the no, no, no warrants. There were issued summons. Okay. okay. So just to go in a little bit more detail about that. So they were indicted on Tuesday. Jeremy Hawkins is the one of the five firefighters that was actually issued an arrest warrant. So he was taken into custody on Wednesday by um, Prince George's County Police, Prince George's County Arson Task Force with assistance from Montgomery County. The other four individuals, as, as Mr. Francis was explaining, they were issued criminal summons, which is basically a document that says, hey, you need to show up in court on said date. So they've been issued that. The, uh, Shelton made contact with their attorneys, so they're fully aware of, of what's going on in the status of the case. That last notification happened yesterday evening, which is why we're able to come to you this morning and discuss the case and the indictments, because we wanted to make sure that was all squared away. All five have been indicted. So, and there's multiple counts for each of the, um, for each of the, the firefighters, which uh, I will get into you after uh, we bring Battalion Chief Jack Tiani to the, to the microphone to explain the case that uh, we began in January of 2020 and more about the four fires. And as he's walking up here, I want to make sure, too, just for clarification, he's the commander of the Prince George's County Fire Investigations Division and the Office of the Fire Marshal. The Prince George's County Arson Task Force is a task force that's made up of detectives from the Homeland Security Unit with Prince George's County Police and investigators from our Fire Investigations Division. They also report to him. So um, he was in charge of basically everything that's, that's been going on up to point. Good morning. For the record, Sajahan, S H A J A H A N, Jag Tiani, J A G T I A N I. And again, I'm a battalion chief in charge of the Office of the Fire Marshal for the Prince George County Fire Mess Department. This investigation began in 2020 when investigators noticed a number of fires occurring in the central portion of the county. One, on one particular occasion, we responded to a fire at the 9500 block of Wellington Street. We determined this cause to be arson. Over the following few days, we arrested two civilians in reference to that case. Two civilians were John, Gian Carlo Reyes of New Carrollton, then 22, and Francis Ortiz Oro of Washington, D.C., then 20. We charged both individuals with first and second degree arson and other related charges. Through the course of the investigation, we learned that Reyes and Ortiz Oro were friends, and Reyes had applied to become a volunteer firefighter at the West Lanham Hills Volunteer Fire Station, Station 828. He was subsequently denied after a background check was conducted by the department in 2019, January of 2019. However, during that, during that investigation, we discovered that station supervisors at the West Lanham Volunteers Fire Department allowed him to still hang around the, the firehouse, even though they knew the revocation of his mem membership application status. Also, Ortiz Oro had also applied to be a volunteer firefighter within the, with, within the department. Um, he never completed the process, so he was never approved or denied. This investigation led us to conduct over 60 court-ordered search warrants at the fire station to include video surveillance devices and electronic evidence items. Those evidence items belong to the members of the West Lanham Hills Volunteer Fire Department. Subsequent investigations revealed that the former firefighters who had been indicted had knowledge of and were involved in the planning of arsons for the purpose of responding to and extinguishing those fires. A total of four fires in, un in unoccupied structures are at the center of this case. Preliminary evidence provides that the civilian suspects set all four fires with the exception of the first fire in, on Cipriano Road, during which the two civilian suspects were accompanied by former volunteer firefighter Smith. The evidence shows that all were all in the indicted were aware of the fires occurring before, during, and after the fires were set. How we broke this case. All four fires were under investigation, but, but it was the fourth and final fire which we were able to garner invaluable assistance from the community during a canvas. 
This canvas ultimately led to the suspects and, and the discovery of this criminal scheme to burn down vacant structures solely for the purpose of being called to and extinguishing those fires. All the fire, all of the structures were vacant with two of those being for sale. Again, no civilians or firefighters were injured in any of those fires. Jen? Thank you. Um, if you have any questions for State's Attorney Brave Boy or for um, Commander Jack Tiani. Um, also, to, in answer to your question, Tracy, the breakdown, Hawkins is 14 counts including first degree arson, multiple conspiracy to commit first degree arson and misconduct office misconduct in office charges. Holzberger has 10 counts, including conspiracy to commit first degree arson and multiple misconduct in office charges. Smith has 15 counts, including second degree arson and multiple conspiracy to commit arson and misconduct in office charges. St. John is facing 13 counts. He was indicted on 13 counts, including multiple conspiracy to commit arson and misconduct in office charges. And Vasquez, it is 12 counts, um, again, including first degree arson and multiple conspiracy to commit and misconduct in office charges. Again, really important for our community to know that, again, the last fire was at the end of uh, January, towards the end of January, and as soon as they got information, once they made the arrest of the, the civilians, which was very, um, we were very grateful to the community because that's how they were able to break the case, and they got information that there could be firefighters involved in this, the firefighters in question were immediately removed from operations while investigators did their work. And as you heard, more than 60 search warrants that's an extensive investigation. Um, but the danger is over. It's been over for 14 months now. And those individuals have not been on our community streets fighting fires or in service during the past 14 months. Do you have any questions for anybody? Is it two or five? I'm sorry, it's five. Five. Oh, you get five companies. Hawkins, our last check, Hawkins was still incarcerated on a $50,000 bond. So, Saj, yeah, I, there were there was there was reasons out of the investigation that um, required uh, an arrest warrant for him versus the others. Can't go into detail on that. Any, could somebody any, just oh, go ahead, Brent. any repercussions for the volunteer fire company itself? Sure. I mean, back when this was going on, there were those issues with a lack of response, and career got put in. They refused. They any repercussions? So um, we do have acting fire chief. The acting fire chief uh, is deputy fire chief uh, James McClellan, who is also in charge of our volunteer services bureau. I, I will, if he wants to add to this, please feel free. Um, so much like um, you see with other public safety agencies, this criminal investigation will take place. It's been taking place. The fire chief also has the authority and will um, and is conducting administrative portions to determine what next steps, if policies were violated or not. But we need for this criminal piece to finish up before we could take certain actions, if there are action that needs to be taken involving that particular fire department. So, how the fire department? Was there anything else found? Sure. Let me let me actually ask them. So, Saj and uh, State's Attorney, there's a question before us: if there was anything located during the search warrant that was of concern. Um, that, I'm sorry, repeat your question again. Sure. Sure. So there are, there are, there are potential issues that were, um, that were in violation of department policy that we could not take action on at the time, despite making sure that the situation was safe there because of the criminal investigation that we have going on. We couldn't tip our hand to those people at the time, but again, those things are things that we will be attacking as soon as the criminal situation is is complete. Could you address what those things are? Uh, not at this time. Violations, violations there, somebody give us just the violations of policies and procedures. There were violations of policies and procedures that were witnessed and um, during the during the searches that will be addressed. Could somebody just give us a gut check about how angry it makes you that people sworn to protect lives or potentially putting lives at risk? So, 
Go ahead. You know, it is unacceptable and it's disheartening and it makes us angry that anyone uh, who has sworn uh, to protect our communities uh, would do anything that could potentially harm our communities. You know, these are individuals who absolutely know the devastation that can be caused by fires. It's, it's devastating. And to act recklessly, which is what is alleged here, and again, I have to reiterate that these individuals are indicted, they are not yet convicted, and so uh, they have the presumption of, of innocence. And so I'm going to just speak broadly, not specifically about this case. Um, but anyone who is in a position of trust, anyone who understands really the, the consequences, the repercussions of their actions, we know that fires kill. Uh, we know that fires can destroy communities. Uh, we know that fires can, you know, make uh, the, those neighbors who surround the fire uh, nervous and uncomfortable and scared. And so anyone who has been in this position of trust, who's been trained, who has raised their right hand and sworn to protect this community, when they violate that oath, um, it is devastating to our community. And that is why we are going to take action. That's why we've taken the actions that we've taken so far and that we are going to pursue this case zealously, uh, like we do all of our cases. But I think it's important for the public to know that we hold everyone to the same standards, that the laws apply to every single person in our community. And I don't care who you are uh, or what your profession is, if you violate the public trust, if you devastate our communities in this way, that we will hold you accountable, period. And that's what we are here uh, to share with you today. I mean, what would be if their response maybe led to other fires or events not being responded to? And could there be charges because of that? You know, we are still investigating. You know, the, in, the, the grand jury process is actually a part of an investigative process. It's not the end of the investigation. So we will continue to review these actions and work with the fine men and women of uh, the fire EMS department here in Prince George's County, as well as the Prince George's County Police Department and all of our uh, public safety partners uh, to conduct a full and thorough investigation. How are you looking at any possible losses because of this? We, we, again, we will continue to investigate uh, some of the information that you guys are requesting today. We appreciate the questions, uh, but because this is an ongoing investigation, because we anticipate these matters being adjudicated in a court of law, there's certain information that we cannot provide at this time. Uh, but just know that the, um, that the investigation will be full and thorough, that any losses or any additional claims uh, against these officers will, uh, or these former uh, firefighters will be pursued. Chief, can you uh, speak, uh, you, you talked a couple of times about this uh, question of motive in this case. Is it just the greater glory or some great joy in going and fighting fires? Or is there some kind of career benefit for being on more fires? I, I, I don't, I don't quite no, there's no like status quo. There's, you know, you write a certain amount of tickets or you go to a certain extinguish a number, set number of fires that you, so no, there's not. I mean, initially just the information that they had so far is it was just for the purpose of extinguishing fires. I wanted to answer your earlier question though from, from the fire chief's point of view, which is, if these allegations are true, you know, these men and women, the, the motto for our department is one, one county, one department, one mission, and our mission is to serve this community. So if these allegations are true, then what these five particular individuals did is completely counter to what our mission is and would be considered reprehensible. But it's why the fire chief took this so seriously, didn't wait for, hey, let's find out if we can be sure at the first sign that there was the possibility that they could be involved, they were immediately taken out of operations. A fire, going to fires is extremely dangerous business. 
despite the fact that these vacant these structures were vacant, firefighters could have been injured in extinguishing these fires. So we're very grateful that no firefighters, no members of the community, it's not just physical, you know, construction that was lost. There was a potential for real danger here. And that's why the, the, the fire chief took it so seriously and took action immediately. And these, these, these particular individuals have not been in service for 14 going on 15 months now while we awaited the outcome of the grand jury indictments. So we have those indictments and now we can move forward and that's a, a good thing. But as, as the state's attorney has been saying, they are innocent until proven guilty, but we didn't want to take any chances, which is why they were removed from service so early on. Um, in terms of the, the motive, uh, I think the chief explained when he made his comments that it appears to be for the sole purpose of just being called into service to extinguish the fire. No, no, no. I, we, they, they investigate somewhere around 400 arsons, we think about a year. Um, our folks respond to calls for service every three minutes and 34 seconds. We're an extremely busy fire department. Um, we are the largest municipal combination fire department in the United States, which is career and volunteer. We have a robust system. We have very effective people out there who do a damn good job. And, and these five uh, individuals and the allegations against them are completely against what we stand and what we work for 24 hours, seven days a week in this county. Has anybody else at that department been removed from operational service? Um, in relation to this case, these five were, were the ones taken out of out of emergency operations. And a general overview of that age, has anybody else? So we haven't been able to do that full administrative piece yet because we haven't been able, we weren't even able to discuss it, right? Because investigators couldn't tip their hand while it was ongoing so there's a lot that still needs that's going to be done it's still coming though am i right on that okay the allegation that they paid that the firefighters paid the civilians or the civilians just did it we don't have any uh, we don't have any indication of that Like I said, I, you know, this matter will be adjudicated. And so we're, we're providing you some general information today. Uh, we can't go into all of the details uh, that may be a part of our case uh, today. But as uh, we move forward, we will, we will certainly keep you informed of any hearings or motions or any other uh, 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 proceedings in court on this matter uh, so that you can uh, do your due diligence and inform the public at the appropriate time. So thank, thank you. you. Pretty good. Okay, thank you so much for coming. And thank you very much to the state's attorney's office <coughs> and our investigators.